this discussion, what I'm going to do here is just start the spotting techniques and guidelines discussion um, and cover the first part of this. We'll cover the, the, the latter part of it actually in class. So the, the, the previous, the talk prior to this, we looked at just some basics as far as exercise setup, real simple things such as different grips, foot positioning, and what have you. What this is going to focus on are spotting techniques um, in regards to the safety of, of performing some of your, your basic strength training exercises. The, the two biggest reasons why you use a spotter with certain exercises is one for safety and the other for um, assistance if you're doing what are sometimes called forced reps where a spotter is slightly assisting with the concentric portion of the lift. You can also do this if somebody's doing heavy eccentrics where the focus is on the lowering aspect or the um, active lengthening contraction of muscle and the person needs help with, with lifting the weight up concentrically. The, the basics when you're looking at exercises that should have spotters Anything where a barbell's over the head, over the face, on the back, or if it's racked in the front of the shoulders. And we're going to talk about how to position yourselves and how you should utilize your hands for this. You can also spot with dumbbells. Um, we're going to talk about the, the safest way to spot when if you're spotting a heavier dumbbell lift, um, how you would do that as well. So when looking at having the bar overhead or a bar on the rack um, on, on your back or in front of the shoulders, ideally you do most of these lifts in a power rack anyway. And ideally a power rack is going to be set up that even if the lifter misses a lift, that a lot of times the barbell can be um, caught by the actual spotting pins. Um, if you've ever seen a power rack, it's basically like the small... Um, or the rack where you can have the, the pins in that can actually catch the barbell. So ideally for, for safety purposes you would utilize that. Some people for instance squat out of squat stands um, which is fine. Again the spotter is just going to have to be a little more prepared and ready to take it particularly if a, um, if, if a lifter misses a lift without the, without the rack. Simply, you know, a simple concept, examine the area. A lot of times um, strength training facilities do get messy. Um, make sure everything's cleared out of the area. You also want to make sure when you look at a spotter that the qualities of the spotter. So if you're, in other words, if you're doing something very heavy, make sure that the size and strength of the spotter is going to be adequate to help you with the lift. So, you know, you don't want too big of a size and strength disparity with the spotter. Make sure they're going to be capable of assisting with the lift, particularly if it's a max effort lift. Um, so make sure that, again, someone who has enough experience and at least basic strength capabilities and they're able to do that. Um, make sure, again, if you're going to do an exercise outside of a rack, that again you need to make sure that the spotters are very capable you may want to have more than one spotter so again an example of that would be doing squats out of squat stands instead of a power rack where there's no uh, spotting pins to catch the barbell if the lifter were to not be able to complete the lift when you're doing any type of strength training movement where the barbells over the face um, you know, a real basic example of this would be your bench press exercise with the barbell. You don't particularly, you don't necessarily press the barbell where it's directly over your face, but the barbell has to pass the face to kind of line itself up with the chest uh, with doing the movement. You want to make sure you use an alternating grip. And what that's just going to do is the alternating grip is just going to permit you to be able to lift the barbell in case that, for instance, if the individual who was bench pressing couldn't complete the lift, it's just going to make it easier for you to grasp the barbell. Again, remember, use an alternating grip when you don't want your grip strength to be a factor. So if it's a really heavy bench press, the alternating grip will give you a stronger grip to help pick the barbell up. The exception with this rule with the alternating grip is any type of movement that has a curved bar path. Um, an example of this would be um, someone doing a lying um, 
tricep extension exercise or what they call, you know, they, they, they use the term skull crushers or the French press um, where someone's lying on their back and they have a, a barbell and they're doing tricep extensions going from their forehead and straightening their arms out. You, for that type of lift, you want to use a supinated grip to spot. Okay, so if it's a curved path, you use a supinated grip, palms up the spot, but if you're but in picking up and putting down the bar, use an alternating grip. So that would be kind of the exception to always using an alternating grip is with, with movements with a curved path. As the spotter, you always want to be mindful of your posture. So again, make sure that you're you know you're you're utilizing your hips. Um, you know, if you're spotting a heavy bench press or a floor press for that matter. You know, bend at your hips to be able to utilize your power, and again, utilize that alternating grip. Make sure your, you know, your shoulders are in, in proper positioning. If you're going to spot dumbbells, and this is a big mistake that a lot of people make, if ever you're spotting a dumbbell press exercise, spot as close to the dumbbell as possible, um, up at the wrist. You see a lot of people spot at the elbows, and that could create a potentially unstable situation for the lifter, if you're pushing somebody up at their elbows, um, you know, they may lose control of the dumbbell that way. So actually spot up at the wrists um, to, to either assist with the lift or to um, prevent any issues if, if somebody fails while doing the lift. Now with your, your power exercises, your Olympic lifts, so this would be your, your clean, your clean and jerk, your, your snatch lift. You're not going to per se spot these lifts, but what you want to do is teach athletes to escape the bar. Um, meaning, you know, you're not going to be there to catch the bar or to catch them. You want to teach athletes how to get themselves out of these positions. And that's why Olympic lifts are so complicated in their technique, just even from a safety perspective. So, in any, how you would do this is any exercise where the bar is in front of the body. Okay, so your, your classic power clean um, or hang clean position, you want to teach them to push the barbell out and move their body backwards. So they would actually move backwards away from the bar to escape it while the barbell is getting dropped to the floor. And if the bar goes overhead, whether it be a... Um, a snatch lift or even a, a push jerk or a power jerk or a clean and jerk, if the barbell's already overhead and they're going to miss or have to drop the bar, they're to drop the bar and move and jump forward. Okay? So if the bar is in front of the body, they go backwards. If the bar is overhead, they go forward. Okay? And again, just as we talked about before, again, make sure the platform's clear of any other objects or even people for that matter to make sure that if these lifts do get missed that um, the lifter can, can uh, safely get out of the way and um, be out of the path of the barbell. <clears throat> when you look at the number of spotters and the communication, again the number of spotters is going to vary. Um, you know, if, if you're looking at really heavy loads you're going to want to have more than one spotter. You want to make sure that, you know, depending on the skill of the individual, their experience, the skill and strength of the spotters, again, that's all going to dictate. If you have somebody going for an extremely heavy lift, um, you're going to want to have more than one spotter. Um, or if, for instance, the individual spotters themselves are not that strong, you're going to want to do the same. Again, part of this comes into play that the lifter kind of, the, the individual who's lifting kind of really knows what their limits are. Um, you know, if they're trying to lift, you know, if they're trying to break a squat personal record by, you know, 60 or 70 pounds, you're probably looking at something that they, there's a much greater likelihood of them failing with. So you're going to want to have more spotters for that. And as far as communication goes, you know, there, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. It's just a matter of you know, making sure that you, the person doing the lift and the spotter have clear communication. So, you know, if, if you if you want to lift off, make sure you communicate that. Make sure you communicate how many reps you want to do and, and when to move the bar. Um, if, if doing a lift off, make sure that you communicate when you want the lift off to occur. You know, when you want, when you want the spotter to potentially take the bar, you know, whether you would tell them or, or whatever they'd have to watch out for. 
Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, personally I've always done, I always say if I want to lift off, I say one, I, I mean, I tell the spot, I tell the person spotting me, you know, I'm going to go one, two, three, lift. At lift, we'll, we'll unwrap the bar. Um, and I usually communicate, you know, unless until, unless I tell you to, don't take the bar um, so that there's no interference with the lift. <clears throat> Again, with the lift off, I kind of talked about this a little bit on the last slide. It's just a um, communication issue. Depending on the amount of spotters you have, you may have a position shift. So, for instance, if you're using two spotters in the bench press, one of the spotters may help with the lift off, and then they will move to the side of the barbell, um, meaning that you'd have then two, a spotter on each end of the barbell in the case that you would fail. So that would be where your position shift would take place. Again, communicate if you're going to need assistance or not. A lot of times it's a good idea, you know, if, if you're not as familiar with the person, you know, tell them, you know, if you're, if you're going for a maximum attempt or it's something you've never done before, let them know that. Um, if you're doing super maximal loads, meaning you're going above your maximal lift, but you're doing it to maybe stress your eccentric portion, tell them you're going to lower it under control and there to help you with the concentric portion of the lift or the, or the actual lifting portion of the lift. It's a good idea to kind of communicate that or if you're looking to do a forced rep, tell them just to help you enough to complete the lift. Don't just take the barbell off of you. Um, you know, those would be um, some things that you can do. And and in addition to this, we're, we're going to talk about this a little bit, but examine in, in your textbook um, in the different um, core primary lifts like the bench press and the squat examine the guidelines for spotting for each one of those different lifts and, and we'll touch on it a little bit but but certainly for your organization purposes uh, make sure you kind of view and look over that 